Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can impose changes to an equilibrium system and something called Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, and there's a nice definition there in blue, which we'll get to in just a second. But first of all, we need to work out what sort of changes we can impose to a system that's at equilibrium. So there's three that we're going to look at specifically. Okay, we can change the concentration of the products or the reactants. So let's write that in. We can change the concentration of the products or the reactants. Okay, we can also change the overall pressure of the system. So we can change the overall pressure of the system. Okay, and thirdly and finally, we can change the temperature of the system. Change overall temperature. Of the system. And Le Chatelier's principle here in blue says that if a stress, a stress being one of these three changes, if a stress is applied to a system that is at equilibrium, the system will reach a new equilibrium in such a way that partially counteracts the change. So remember, if we apply a stress to a system that's at equilibrium, the system will no longer be at equilibrium, okay? It'll be searching for a new equilibrium and it will find a new equilibrium in such a way that partially counteracts the stress that we imposed. And this will make a lot more sense with a few examples, okay? The important thing to note is that Le Chatelier's principle is just a prediction, okay? We have to use our collision theory and rate of reaction stuff to be able to prove Le Chatelier's principle correct. So let's take a look at this example here. Okay, and some important things to note are that we have uh, this hydrated copper complex here is pink. Okay, and this copper chloride complex is blue. Okay, so they're gonna be important when we solve through some of these problems. Okay, but let's take a look at what happens to this system if we add some hydrochloric acid. Okay, so if we add hydrochloric acid, what are we really adding to the system? We're adding lots of H plus and Cl plus, uh, Cl minus, sorry. H plus and Cl minus. We're adding lots of chloride ions and our chloride ions here are in our reaction. So it's our chloride ions that we're going to be interested in. So if we add hydrochloric acid, we're increasing the concentration of chloride ions. So this is taking a look at the first dot point here, changing the concentration of products or reactants. And in this case, we do that by adding hydrochloric acid. So we increase the concentration of chloride ions. So Le Chatelier's principle, what will that predict? Well, let's take a look. Le Chatelier's principle says that if a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the system will reach a new equilibrium in such a way that partially counteracts the change. So here we have increased the amount of chloride ions in our system. So how can we partially counteract this change? We can use these chloride ions up. So we're gonna do the opposite of what we did at the start. So we've added chloride ions, let's use them up. How can we do that? We can favor the forward reaction or favor the products in this case. Okay, let's use our collision theory though to check that Le Chatelier's principle is in fact correct. Well, if we increase the concentration of chloride ions, we're going to increase the number of collisions between our reactant molecules. Okay, and that will therefore increase the number of successful collisions, okay, which increases the rate of the forward reaction. Okay, now if we increase the rate of the forward reaction, over time, this will increase the concentration of products. Okay, so think if we're increasing the rate of the forward reaction, we're gonna be making more of our products here. And if we increase the concentration of our products, the we will have an increase in the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay, so we've increased both rate of both reactions, okay, and they will continue to increase and decrease respectively until they reach a new equilibrium. Okay, but because we have favored the forward reaction, okay, we've increased the rate of the forward reaction first, it is therefore favoured and we can say that adding chloride ions or adding hydrochloric acid is going to increase or it's going to favour the forward reaction. Okay, so in this case, adding hydrochloric acid favours 
the forward reaction. Okay, and that agrees with the Le Chatelier's principle. So that's how we can use collision theory to prove Le Chatelier's predictions correct. But from now on, we're just going to take Le Chatelier's principle as being correct, and we will just be using that to solve problems. Now, what does that mean for a color change in this system? Well, initially, let's take a look at the Kc value for this uh, equilibrium. We have a Kc value here, which is quite small. It's less than one. And remember, a K value that's less than one, K is equal to concentration of products over reactants. And so if K is less than one, we have more reactants. So initially, equilibrium lies to the left. Okay, and if equilibrium lies to the left, we're going to have more of these pink ions in solution. Okay, so initially, it is more pink. We're still going to have some blue in there, but it's going to be mostly dominated by pink uh, colours. However, what happens when we add the hydrochloric acid? Well, we've just seen that we favour the forward reaction. And the forward reaction favours the production of these blue ions here. So if we add hydrochloric acid, we favour the forward reaction and we say that the solution turns from more pink, okay, because that's where it was initially. It wasn't just pink, it was more pink to a more blue colour. Okay, so it's not turning from distinctly pink to distinctly blue, okay, it's going from more pink to more blue. Now let's take a look at another example. Okay, so we're going to erase what we've done so far. And we're going to take a look at what happens when we add water. Okay, and something that we've got to make sure that we don't get mixed up with water is that we don't increase the concentration of water. So it's going to act slightly differently to what we've just done. So let's rub this out. Okay, and we'll keep that, uh, keep that K in there. Okay, but if we increase the amount of water, so we're going to add some H2O to this system. And this is where a lot of people slip up because we're not increasing the concentration of water here. So we're not necessarily going to increase the concentration of water and favour the reverse reaction. That's not what is necessarily going to happen. We're adding water, but that doesn't increase the concentration of water. It's a liquid. It's fixed concentration. But what we do is we therefore, we dilute this system. And if we dilute the system, Le Chatelier's principle says that we've applied this stress of dilution. So we're going to try and counteract that change by making or favouring the reaction that produces more products. Okay, so let's take a look at what that means. So we've got, uh, let's say we've got a beaker here. Okay, and we've got some of our reactants in this beaker and some of our products. Okay, and this is, or well, let's lower our water level a little bit. Let's go for some, let, let's put them all down here. And this is our water level. And then what happens is we add some water to this system. So our water level is now all the way up here, but we've not changed the amount of reactants or products that we have in this system. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna favor the reaction that produces more products. Okay, so we wanna get more products into here to get the concentration back to how we started. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna favor the reaction that produces more products. So in this case, we're producing, let's say here producing four and one, so that's five aqueous species on the left. And here we're not, we don't take into account this six because it's a liquid. We only take into account the aqueous species. So one there, so it's five, versus one. So we're gonna favor, in this case, the reverse reaction because it's gonna produce five versus the one. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna trade in one aqueous ion here for five aqueous ions, which will lift the concentration which we initially decreased by diluting the system. So what happens then in terms of color? Well, first of all, let's write in a couple of little rules here. So if we add H2O, therefore we dilute the system, we favor the reaction that produces more moles of aqueous species. Okay, but what happens to the color change? Well, initially, just by diluting it, initially the color's going to a fade. So initially, 
the more pink color. Remember, because initially at the first equilibrium, we have this small k value, so we have more pink. So initially, the more pink color fades. Okay, but we see that we're favoring the reverse reaction here. So initially, the more pink color fades, but over time, as a new equilibrium is re-established, a stronger pink color forms. Now remember that it can only partially counteract the change, unless your Tellier's principle can only partially counteract the change. So it's not going to be as strong as the pink was initially, but it's going to do the best that it can to try and get back to that initial pink colour. So we've taken a look at what happens if we change the overall concentration of products or reactants. And we can do that directly, or we can do that in total by dilution, okay, so the addition of water. Let's take a look at what happens if we change the overall temperature of the system. So we're going to rub out what we've done so far because we still need this equation. So let's take this out. And here what's going to be really important when we're talking about temperature is whether heat is formed or used up in our reaction. Okay, so here we can see that heat is being produced. So let's say that we increase the temperature of this system. Okay, and if we're going to increase the temperature, we are using our, uh, we, we're producing more and more heat. So Le Chatelier's principle, if we think of heat as a product, would say that we're increasing the amount of heat, therefore we're going to favour the reverse reaction. Okay, but let's think of this in terms of endothermic and exothermic processes. Well, if heat is a product, we have an exothermic process because heat is flowing from the system into the surroundings. Okay, so this particular system or this particular forward reaction is an exothermic process. Therefore, increasing temperature, we're going to try and if we've added more heat, we want to try and use this heat up that we've added. So we've increased the temperature, well, let's use that temperature up. Let's use that heat up. And we're going to do that by favouring the reverse reaction, as per what Le Chatelier's principle predicts. So we increase the temperature, we're going to favour the reaction that uses more heat. And we know that when heat is being absorbed from the surroundings into the system, that's an endothermic process. So increasing temperature favours the endothermic reaction. In this case, the reverse reaction. And what would happen in terms of colour change? Okay, we would see that the system would go from initially being more pink. So initially, it's more pink than blue to a stronger pink colour. Because we're favouring the reverse reaction. Okay, so we're favouring the formation of these pink ions. So increasing temperature favours the endothermic reaction, which therefore decreasing temperature would favour the exothermic reaction. And we can tell if a reaction's endothermic or exothermic depending on whether heat here is written as a product or a reactant. Another way it could be written is it could give you a delta H for that process. Okay, let's take a look at uh, a final example. So this time looking at changing the total pressure of the system. And we're going to look at the Haber process. And the Haber process comes up a lot. So let's look at the Haber process, which is nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas. And that is in a reverse reaction with ammonia. Okay, what would happen if we added some nitrogen gas to this system? So we pumped in some nitrogen gas. Well, this is like the concentration one that we were looking at earlier. We would increase the amount of nitrogen gas. How are we going to counteract that change? We're going to use this nitrogen gas up. So we're going to favour the forward reaction. Okay, but that's just what we were doing before with the concentrations. Okay, I want to look at what happens if we change the overall pressure of the system. And we can change the overall pressure of the system by changing the volume. So let's say that we uh, let's say that we decrease the volume. 
And if we decrease the volume, we are increasing the pressure. So let's take a look at what's happening there. Okay, and it's very similar to the dilution situation that we were doing before in aqueous uh, solutions. So let's say that we have, uh, this is like a a stopper, okay, it could be, think of this as like a syringe, okay, and we have uh, some nitrogen in here, and some hydrogen gas, and some ammonia, okay, and what happens is we're going to decrease the volume, so we're going to push our syringe in, so we've now got all of these compressed into a smaller space. So Le Chatelier's principle is going to go, well, let's favour the reaction that produces less moles of gas. Okay, so what could happen is we could favour the forward reaction in this case because we have two moles of gas versus four moles of gas. So let's favour the reaction that produces less moles of gas, in this case the forward reaction. So let's trade in one of these nitrogens and three of these hydrogens for just two ammonias. And look at that, we've now decreased the overall pressure of this system. So we've counteracted the change. So if we decrease the volume and we increase the pressure, we're going to favor the reaction that produces less moles of gas. Okay, likewise, if we increased the volume, in other words, we lowered the pressure we would favor the reaction that produced more moles of gas.